You were driving. We've crashed. Crash landed. Crash landed. Good <laughs> oh, luck. Yeah, see you later, world. Yeah. I have landed successfully on the space. Hey, oh man, I just floated off it. Just floated off it. I didn't want to. Found the gravity. Now then, welcome back to another episode of Revenge of the Sea Team. How are you all doing today? I'm on my own today, no ego, and it's raining. Raining and stormy and I could be having a tornado anytime soon. I think we miss him, don't we? We miss him, yes. But today, I've got to sort out that big mess of chess behind us. We mentioned it together on Skype. Uh, after last episode recording, setting up the ender quarry and sorting it all out, we left it. And we left it like that. And so today's episode, I've decided that I'm going to do something about sorting it out. And we did have a talk about it. And uh, we thought that it would be a good idea to have a warehouse. Now, I pushed forward the idea of having a great big warehouse running down here. A large, large warehouse. Using the same sort of technology as this over here. Now, what Ego did, which was pretty awesome, um, apart from just connecting it all up so that every single thing hooked up to every other chest, so it had lots and lots of storage from the ender chest, the dumping chest, from the quarry, just to everything, uh, hopefully to the uh, barrels first for the ores, uh, he sent everything cobble, or had a retrieval node on here, set to cobblestone. So the retrieval node then retrieved from all of the connected inventories and put all the cobblestone into this void barrel here. Meaning that we didn't have tons and tons of cobble cluttering up the system. However, we do have tons and tons of basalt cobblestone and granite and dirt and limestone and a lightning bolt has just hit somewhere close by. Oh, the storms are brewing. The storms are brewing. I've slept. I've slept in a bed a few times. I should have reset it really, but it didn't do it. Uh, we've got all this sort of stuff, and I've got to take all my fossils and archaeology stuff out. We've got to take the redstone out. We've got to basically take things out of the storage here. It's, it's doing it again. It's, it's doing lots of uh, lots of lightning effects, and I don't really know where it's doing it. Oh, my days. Okay, well, anyway, we're, we're going to have a warehouse. going to have a warehouse. I've got an idea for a warehouse. I've got an idea for a concept for an, a warehouse. What I have to do over here is build a warehouse. Uh, so we're going to have a warehouse that is pretty dang big and probably link that house into it. So I should get going on with that now and have it built anytime soon. And there we go, just like that. As if by magic a warehouse appears. Now, I've left the, the roof off the warehouse, but you can already see that there is a lot of storage in here. That is a lot of storage. It's taken me a very long time. But this is all cheap stuff. It's cheap to make um, chests. We've got massive wood farm egos been created for ages. Uh, cheap to make these pipes, it's just redstone and uh, slabs. Really cheap and easy to make. I've just done it on a very large scale. And on this large scale, this is all hooked up to one uh, input chest. This one input chest. The input chest is basically dump chests and quarries. Everything goes into here and gets pulled out by a transfer node behind with a stack upgrade and some speed upgrades. Only 20 speed upgrades because everything I've put in it so far has been speedily put into a chest location. So we've got chest pools of all sorts of random stuff. Random stuff. A lot of this random stuff though is useful to us and we want to keep it. We want to use a lot of random stuff like there's wood and ender pearls and there's ores and all sorts of bits and pieces within this random dumping area that we want to keep. So I've come up with a way of pulling out of these chests when we need them. So the whole chest system is hooked up via this transfer uh, pipe. And I've come up with an idea to put an output 
on the back of ender chests. Different ender chests under different colours. There are 16 potential colours that we can add into these ender chests. So there's space for a large amount of ender chests here. And each one's a different output to a different place. So for instance, we've got output mob drops. Uh, and that currently empty, but I'm going to be putting things into that chest and outputting them at the mob farm. So we've got a retrieval node here, which is taking items from the different inventories over there and bringing it and storing it into the ender chest associated. So this is uh, Indiana Bones. It's all of my fossils and archaeology stuff is under the white channel. So it's a uh, magenta, Nemson. Green, Ego, White, uh, Indiana Bones. So it's Nemson and Ego, Indiana Bones. There we go. And that's that's uh, that's kind of the setup that I've got going on here. I've got a lot of off-camera work to hook it all up and set it all up. Uh, but there are a few locations that you already know. Mob drops, we've made a little mob, um, mob, far mob farm. We've made mob farms. And we've got a room or a building in the village for storing mob drops. So that's where those are going to go. Uh, only the mob drops that we don't really use very often. So other mob drops that we're going to use a lot of will go through one of the other stations and go off somewhere else. Uh, Indiana Bones. All of this kind of stuff will end up going to get processed at my Fossils and Archaeology building. Uh, Diggy Blocks. I figured Diggy Blocks would be a good place to just store a quantity of all of the different blocks that we dig up, such as cobble and dirt and all that. And I figured that would be a good place over at the mine where we've been doing most of our crafting just down there. Most of our crafting's been done there up until this point, and the Diggy Blocks will probably be a load of barrels there to take care of that. Uh, wood stores. We haven't got a wood stores yet. This warehouse over here was kind of a wood stores. All the chests over here did have different wood-based products in and things. Uh, but now Ego's got the wood farm set up. And there's one of the farms has been removed. The upper farm, this one that operated out of this space here, has been removed. And ev all the wood farming is now underground. Ego's got it all set up. He's been playing with it and messing with it and changing it. And doing all sorts to it over and over again. Every time I turn on uh, and come onto the server, it's changed. He's going through the process of making it the best he can. And then coming up with new ideas and changing it. Uh, but the latest one was get rid of the tree farm off the top. Because we're sick of seeing trees that aren't growing. So that might be a good place for us to build a wood stock room. Uh, just general wood supplies. All the roofing bits and pieces and... Uh, fence blocks and doors and all sorts of things. When we need something that's made majority out of wood, there will be the place that we'll build it. But that's another another thing for another episode. Uh, another thing that I've thought of, this is basically to clear, clear things out of this bulk storage. Pull things out that we will likely use around the place. Because going through all these chests is a nightmare. You just literally... Open up, open up, open up. Nothing in there, nothing in there, nothing in... Oh, there's something in there. Right, is there anything I want in there? No. Over this side, is there something I want out of this? Is there something I want out of that one? Is there something I want out of that one? And so on and so on and so on. Just constantly going through them to try and find the stuff that you want. And that's no good. We can't live like that. We can live our lives like that. So we're going to go through something else over here. Uh, raw ores. So all the ore blocks and stuff will be put into this output chest so that they will get sent to be processed. Uh, ship stores and ship's vault. Two new locations that I'm thinking of uh, setting up uh, on the ship itself. The ship's vault will probably have the valuables, the things that we want to uh, keep. And ship stores, just having a good selection of things that we use in crafting fairly regularly. Um... So I've got a lot of setting up to do. And the retrieval nodes at the back uh, can put a filter on to basically filter out what that retrieval node will search for in the warehouse. And it's got space for six different filters. And each filter's got nine spaces. So that's quite a lot. That's uh, 54 items. And you can put filters inside filters as well. So we can have a virtually... 
an infinite amount of filters inside filters and more filters in there to suck out items into an ender chest and at the other end pull from the ender chest and put into the right stock area. So this is just kind of like a great big buffer warehouse. A great big buffer warehouse. So we can run quarries and we can dump stuff in chests over here and slowly but surely they'll get put where they're supposed to go. Uh, there's also a case that we can put like the uh, filing cabinets and stuff on a wall. We can also have the storage drawers and that set up so that there's something on this wall here maybe for storage drawers. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out yet, but I wanted to bring you back before I sealed it in. I'm thinking that the entire, the entire area over here, this section here, is probably going to get buried back underground. So I'll put a lid on it and then bury it under soil so we can build something else on top in the future. And this bit here, as an extension of this rooftop, will probably have its own roof put on it. So there's still quite a bit of building, quite a bit of work to do. And uh, slowly but surely, I've got to work through the retrieval nodes and the filters. I have made a few retrieval nodes, though. So we've got a little supply of six at the minute that I will slowly but surely work through and sort out, uh, sending stuff away. Uh, so let me get on with that, and I'll be back. All right, so I've got the roof on. I've made a nice little flat roof over the top of the warehouse, uh, the warehouse dumping chest. It's got a nice little flat roof on, but you can see inside, it looks pretty cool. I've still got some vines in there that, that grew down while I was constructing it before I put the lid on. But still, it looks okay. And I've made sure that we've got either full stairs or half slabs all the way around here so it doesn't need lighting. Apart from that one little spot there that all villages, houses seems to have that one spot where mobs can spawn on their rooftops. I don't know how villagers survive against the zombies if they allow spawning grounds like that. Uh, this is now the dump, warehouse and distribution. So inside, it looks fairly neat and tidy. It looks very villager-like still. We've still got all of the uh, ender chests and everything sorted out. I've laid the floor, though. I've put some uh, covers from glowstone and some jungle wood plank glow um, covers down just to give the floor a, a nice feel about it and all of the things are coming in all of the things and well the indiana jones area the indiana jones uh, indiana bones should i say uh, is getting lots of stuff and the retrieval node is searching but slowly searching so there's some of these chests that have a load in that it hasn't got to yet like a load of relic scraps and a load of plant fossils and things. I've got to set it all up to gather all of these things a bit faster, I think. Just to, to get things out of here much faster. Uh, but I've done a little bit more with both, both the mob drops and the Indiana Bones section. So the first two sections have retrieval nodes on. Uh, I've set it all up so that the filters are working properly there. And I've got a filter on here which I need to add some more stuff to. But still, it's getting there. And I need to speed them up. That's another thing. Which, well, when we've got the redstone supplies, we can make some speed upgrades. Uh, but I have changed around in here and started using the storage drawers mod a little bit more successfully, as it were. So, <clears throat> down here, we've still got the input chest, which is that chest, which is the lime green. It comes in and it tries to put everything where it can it goes to a draw controller which puts everything it can in there tries to go to another draw controller which puts everything it can in there and i've rearranged them slightly and used a few upgrades to make sure that they're working properly so um these are the items that we use a fair amount but not regular enough to need to have them going somewhere else mob drop wise i think ender pearls and blaze rods or blaze powder are likely to be the two things that we use the most out of all of these mob drops we've got wither schools and wither school uh, necrotic bones but we don't really get a lot of those through automatically it's just so that the uh, the mass warehouse will grab any that get dumped by mistake uh, and then we've got the va vanilla kind of bony stuff with the heads and stuff and everything just storage Possibly the 
slime balls and string are the most useful there. So the things that are most useful have probably been put into a larger storage container. You see what I mean? The, the bigger they, bigger use they are, the bigger the storage container. So I've done that over here. And that's now sifting through the warehouse of all mob drops and putting them where they should be. So we can get to those quickly. Down here in this section, the Indiana Bone section, I've had a really good rewiring underneath and sorted it all out and tried to make it as successful as possible now. So all the goodies come in via this ender chest here. We've still got it so that sand is going up and out and into the sieve. But the sieve now goes down straight into a dump chest. So it sends all of the produce from the sieve straight back into the warehouse. And then the warehouse will bring it back over in through this chest again, in theory. Uh, I've set up the chest so that at the back... Uh, let's just knock open a hole here because... Going up and down is annoying. Uh, the chest at the back here, the input chest is now that chest so that it will take any of the relic scrap or the fossils, bio fossils, plant fossils, and I've discovered frozen meat also gets used in those devices. And we've got an output as well, but I'll show you the output in a minute. And down here. And through. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, the. The bits that we use mostly in here, in the analyzer, are catching up. All the fossils are being caught up through that little system there. And every produce goes into its chest again. Right? And then down here I've got an output to get rid of coal, cactus green and bone meal, which all come from this process of sieving and analyzing and all that. And that goes straight underneath to the dump chest as well, returning to the warehouse. Uh, all I have to do is come along here and take out anything in here that I want to keep. And one of the things that we've been wanting to keep is all of these DNA. All of these DNA. And I've spotted that frozen meat gives us this kind of DNA. There's a mammoth, a quagga, a dodo, an asmutherian, a simildon and a terror bird those are the ones that we've been picking up so far and not only do they give out this blue dna from the frozen meat but also they produce actual meat so like pink fresh meat uh so this is why this is here now so from from down there all of the meat types the chicken the well from the terror birds presumably we get chicken beef and pork chops come from the other frozen meat types like the mammoth meat and all that kind of stuff comes in that stuff so I, I figured we'd need a, a meat section for when we're feeding all the dinosaurs that i will be breeding mm. sooner or later i'll be taking some of this dna and we'll be processing it through the, the fossils and archaeology mod plenty of milk mm. and all that kind of stuff i'm going to be doing that soon enough i just need an area to do it in and then underneath here as well we've got uh, an ender chest again, the same ender chest, that one there, that pumps out everything it can into this store drawer controller. So we'll only take something out if it's got space at the other end of the pipe. That's the best thing about the thermal expansion pipes. And then it distributes them to here. So any of these items that get put into that chest will come up to here. And we have managed to find some of these um, scarab gems which are very important for training and subduing and taming of the dinos. And I've also got the frozen meat in there, but at the minute there's zero frozen meat because I realised it could be analysed and turned into something. So that's a, an, a vacant slot, really, but it's just there for now. Uh, even the damaged ones could be used and got DNA, which is crazy. And then we've got just other things that we pick up along the way, just useful bits and pieces that we uh, we tend to tend to get but don't do anything with. And on this side, the same thing again, but this time we've got the relic shards and scraps and pottery shards and stuff, which get used in the workbench uh, and create the full Ooh. armor or the full sword or repair the pottery. And the first thing is a uh, broken figurine. There's figurines and stuff that we can use. And uh, these prepare, repair those figurines when we find them. So I've got a little chest there for that. And a little chest over here for all these kind of bones. That I think you can make a bone suit of armour out of. And there's maybe a few other uses for a few other different ones. 
but some of them you create armor out of. Interesting enough, but I'll manually transfer them to there. So I've got the manual transfer chests. That one, that one, and that one. But everything else is kind of automated through the draw controller. And just the same as I've got the, the ender chest in the corner there with a the pipe pumping out, I've also got this filing cabinet now with all the fossil seeds which mm. all have the same item ID number with a different value at the end. So they're all 7555s. So they'll all fit into the filing cabinet. So it'll just keep putting them all in there. And while we're going through all these plant fossils, all of the seeds will be coming into here. And then they will get moved directly into here and fill this up to keep that clean as well. So this chest here is the cleanest it's ever been, apart from the sand being in here. Uh, which I could technically take out the back and put down into the uh, the area where I've been creating all that. It's fairly good. It's all working. And they're just like the first two sections that are virtually complete. They will need a little bit of tweaking and prodding and poking and sorting out as we go. So I've got the first two area outputs from the warehouse sorted. And apart from that, we've got, well, I've got a little setup here for making these filters quickly because I really want to get up to date with sorting these out as fast as I can. So we next ones is probably going to be the diggy blocks and maybe the wood stores. Uh, maybe getting the ores processed straight away or maybe getting the ship sorted straight away. Uh, we'll see what I get up to for next episode. So, thank you all very, very much for watching another episode of Revenge of the Sea Team. Uh, sorry, Ego couldn't be with us today, but he will be with us uh, fairly soon. I think, I think he's got something that he needs to do this weekend. I think he's got a double shift at work. And, uh, of course, last weekend he was doing the Easter weekend stuff. So we've, uh, yeah, we've got a few episodes without Ego to look forward to over the next week. And then everything should be all set up and ready for Ego to return. And we can get on with some fun stuff. Until then, thank you very much for watching another episode. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.